What's up everybody? This is some Battlefield 1 gameplay and that has nothing to do with the rest of the video, so forget all about it. There'll probably be an actual Battlefield 1 team play video coming in a day or two, uh, just because I've been having fun with that. But let's talk about the PS4 Pro. I'm probably going to say Neo accidentally at least a couple times in this video, so forgive me ahead of time. But the PS4 Pro was officially announced today. We'll get to that in a second. First, I just want to say I think the new PS4, not the slim, just the regular PS4, that's a good price. I don't know if it's a especially good looking system, but it's a good price and it was about time for that $300 price drop. Uh, it doesn't look good next to the Xbox One S, but PlayStation has been selling a lot more and a lot of people think they have a stronger ecosystem right now. So it's probably still worth it for people who are considering PlayStation. But let's get to the PS4 Pro and then of course what a lot of you probably clicked on the video to know, how does this affect my potato masher plans? So first, uh, it sounds like the specs that were leaked, was it three or four months ago? Apparently they were pretty much all correct, which was really, really surprising. So we've known the actual PS4 Pro specs for a long time, and those weren't just rumors floating around. Uh, you know, I've kind of been taking them with a little bit of a grain of salt, but they did make a bit of sense. But it's actually a little disappointing to hear them confirmed. Now the bump up to a one terabyte hard drive is good, but that's also kind of the minimum you should have these days. I mean, hard drives are so cheap. I'm honestly surprised they put a 500 gig in it the first time. But one terabyte hard drive, pretty good. Eight gigs of RAM, it's a little bit disappointing. It still only has eight gigs of RAM because RAM is really cheap. And I'll get to another reason why that could be significant in a minute. And then that new two times faster than stock 4.2 teraflop GPU that appears to be based off AMD's new Polaris architecture. So Sony was very, very careful to completely dance around native 4K rendering. Uh, they didn't call it the PS4K, obviously. Um, they said something that actually kind of made me laugh. They said, we could brute force the rendering using traditional rendering methods. And what they mean by that is they could actually render the native resolution. That's not really brute forcing. That's actually rendering native resolution. But they said they're not going to do that. They're going to use some upscaling and they're going to try to run things at lower resolutions, upscale them and output a 4K or 1080p image, depending on what TV you're connected to. Now, on paper, this sounds fine. Uh, you guys know I am a big fan of resolution scaling. I use it quite a bit. I think it's a great way, especially on a monitor with the pixel density of 4K, it's a great way to have really good performance and pretty good visuals. Not quite as good as native, but way, way better than 1080p or 720p scaled up. You can have a really sharp image, but still get a 10 or 15% performance bump over running native res. So it's something I've definitely done before. I have no problem with resolution scaling. What bothers me about this is they're being so vague about it. Like the marketing machine is just running nonstop here and they're not doing a very good job of it. So we know they're going to use some sort of resolution scaling and there are games that do a great job at it and they might do a great job at it and it might look really good. But games are obviously not going to be running at 4K most of the time. Some indies, sure. But the average game is probably not going to be running at native 4K resolution. And to me, this is a little bit problematic because they're trying to sell this as a high-powered PS4, a PS4 for the true enthusiast, a PS4 for people who are willing to spend that extra money to get that extra performance. But the actual bump in quality isn't that different. This doesn't do anything significantly different from old PS4s. It was going to. You know, if they kept HDR just for this new PS4, that would be a significant feature, a feature that most people probably would never use, but that would be a significant feature. Uh, but no, every PS4 is getting that. So the good things about it are Ultra HD streaming. I mean, that's really nice. That's a good thing. Granted, you can get that in an Amazon Fire Stick or the new Chromecast that's coming out. So 4K streaming is not that crazy. Uh, but it's a good thing that they're adding it. It's kind of one of those, well, it's about time things. It's good that it's got the one terabyte hard drive. It's good that they're making the GPU faster. It's good that the price is $400. That's all good. No 4K Blu-ray option is kind of ridiculous, especially since Microsoft made it work in a $300 Xbox One S, which also supports HDR and 4K or Ultra HD media streaming. But this Sony is kind of, they were Blu-ray's daddy in a way. I mean, Blu-ray was their format they were pushing. And of course, it's not like they're the only people who manage it now. A lot of companies have a lot of fingers in the Blu-ray pie, but it is a little bit ridiculous that they didn't carve off a little bit of that for the PS4 Pro. 
Uh, and the internet seems to agree with that. Everybody, even on the dedicated PS4 forums, nobody seems to understand why they didn't do this. When asked about it, they said they just want to focus on the games, but that's also kind of a cop-out excuse. But anyway, I'm not talking about the media streaming features of the 4K Blu-ray. That's fine. That's not really the focus of this video. So they said that you can play at 4K output resolution. So the actual rendering resolutions will vary and they'll probably be somewhat hard to define because like a lot of games that use resolution scaling, some things might be rendered at one resolution, other things at another. So it'll be a little bit hard to tell exactly what resolution games are running at, but they will scale to a 4K output resolution. Or if you have a 1080p TV, they said that the PS4 Pro will automatically detect that you have a 1080p TV or a regular full HD set and it will output at 1080p, but with some enhancements. So what they implied is that developers will have the option to add additional lighting features, to run at higher frame rates, to maybe add a little more anti-aliasing in, stuff like that. Things that you can do on a PC already, and things that it would be really nice if developers had the option to do on a console. Just give you that little bit extra in visual settings, a little bit extra performance. That would be awesome. The problem is, they said they are asking developers to do that. That's kind of dumb, because if you know Sony and you know Sony's history with this stuff, if they're just asking people to do it and they're not requiring it, some first-party games are going to do it. A couple third-party games where the developers have good relationships with Sony, they'll do it too. And then most games probably aren't going to mess with it at all, because that's several different versions of the game you got to get through cert. You're going to have the regular PS4, you're going to have the PS4 Pro at 4K, and you'll have the PS4 at 1080 that's three different versions of the game, and granted, two of them may not be that different from each other, but that's still a potentially significant issue, and I'm very curious to see how this all pans out. Regardless, a more powerful PS4 is not a bad thing, and for a lot of those games where you get dips at 1080p, you know, they might run a lot better now, even without any official backwards compatible patches, or they're calling it forwards compatibility, which is just marketing garbage again. Without any additional patches, a game like Bloodborne might not have those horrific drops anymore. We don't know. I'm assuming we'll be able to test this stuff when it comes out. But older games may not have drops where they used to have drops. And newer games or games that get patched might actually run quite a bit better. So, I mean, that's good. That's not bad. But it does create a problem because you're not going to have a consistent experience between PS4 Pros. It's going to vary based on the machine you're hooked up to or based on the TV you're hooked up to. So someone hooked up to a 4K TV is going to see a different image than someone who's hooked up to a 1080p TV. And that is also potentially problematic, and I'll talk about it more in a minute. But now let's talk about HDR. So for anyone watching this who isn't 100% sure how HDR works, let me just make something clear because Sony... I wouldn't say they outright lied, but they were kind of glossing over it at the conference. They showed off a lot of pretty game footage, but you were not watching that in HDR. I can pretty much guarantee you because that stream wasn't in HDR and most of us don't have 10 bit computer monitors. I mean, I'm pretty much nobody has a 10 bit computer monitor and there's no good way that people are streaming that right now on a regular basis. So you weren't watching actual HDR. You were watching someone approximating HDR and what people always do is they crush the highlights down or they really increase the contrast, they increase the saturation. It's kind of like a sweet FX preset. It makes you think the game might look better because they just bump the contrast and the saturation way up, but that doesn't necessarily make it look better. It just makes it look different and have a little more pop or something like that. So it's, it's marketing. Unless you've seen native HDR content on an HDR compatible set and all of the hardware pieces are HDR compatible, no streaming involved, you haven't actually seen HDR. If you've seen someone take their cell phone and record an HDR TV set, you haven't seen HDR. You have to see it in person. It's a little bit like 144 hertz computer displays. You can talk about them. You can look at them online. You can read what other people have had to say about them. But none of that really matters until you see one in person because there's no way for you to see the difference unless you see it in person on compatible hardware. And that's a little bit of a problem because I'd be willing to bet that a tiny, tiny percentage of the people who are watching today who are going to get that HDR update, even on their original PS4s, they're not going to have HDR compatible sets. And even if they do, how many games are actually going to get HDR patches? The forwards compatible games list that they released today is pretty small. It's like 10 games and there's about another 10 that are coming out in the next year or so. So yeah, that's not nothing, and there'll be some cool games you can show off, 
but that's not a very big list considering how many games have released on the PS4. In my opinion, that's kind of a problem because there's no real way for me to show you the difference between HDR content and non-HDR content unless you're watching on an HDR screen and I'm recording and streaming in HDR, and there's no good way for me to do that. The hardware is just really not there on a consumer level yet for people to see the difference over the internet. You're going to have to go see it in person. So here's the real problem. You guys have been asking me for months if I'm going to make a new build to compete with the PS4 Neo. Well, now it's the Pro. We know what it is. We've kind of known what it is for months. We just didn't know for sure. And I don't know. I'm torn, and here's the problem. This isn't that fast. I know it's the fastest PS4 that's ever been made, but spec-wise, this seems to be very, very similar to the AMD RX 470. Like, extremely similar. So if you think about RX 470 performance, that's about GTX 970 performance for anyone who's not really up to date on that. That's good. That is, that is great. A 970 is still an awesome 1080p card, but that's not that great. And if I'm going to buy a PS4 Pro, and I'm going to build an entire second computer for just kind of better performance, because to match the PS4 Pro, I don't have to double the Potato Masher's power. The Potato Masher is already more powerful than the PS4, and you've seen it in dozens of videos. It's not a ton more powerful, but it is more powerful. So I don't need to double the Potato Masher's power, although I think I could. So is it really worth sinking close to a thousand dollars into getting that whole rig set up i'm honestly not sure and here's part of the problem i can't really record 4k native content unless i'm using something like shadow play the technology is just not realistically affordable enough and compatible enough with enough game related things yet there's a lot of hdcp issues or potential issues that's the problem with a lot of this stuff is HDR and Ultra HD is still new enough that a lot of things change on a pretty regular basis and there's no one universal set standard for a lot of this stuff yet. There will be in a couple years a lot of these questions will be answered and you know you probably won't buy a TV that supports some features but not others and there won't be competing HDR standards and other stuff like that. That'll all get sorted out but for now it's a little bit nebulous and I'll be honest guys I can't afford to get an awesome 4K recorder. I can't do it. It would be minimum $1,000. And I have a computer that can support it. That's not the problem. My main computer can support one. But to get the actual capture card and capture software and everything I would need to do 4K 60 FPS capture, well, about 1000 bucks is the absolute cheapest way to do it. Not the best way to do it, but the absolute cheapest way to do it. And that's a problem because if I just keep recording at 1080p 60 FPS, which to be fair is what most of the people who buy a PS4 Pro will be playing at because most of those people do not have Ultra HD sets yet. There have been 40 million PS4s sold. I guarantee you most of those people don't have Ultra HD TV sets. Just there aren't that many of those being sold yet. So we don't really have numbers on how many PS4 owners have Ultra HD TV sets or how many potential PS4 owners, prospective owners, have Ultra HD TV sets. But I can tell you, based on Ultra HD TV sales, it's not that many people yet. And of course, it will go up over time. But most people aren't going to be playing at 4K. They'll be playing at 1080p with nicer visuals. That's as good as I can record right now, guys. I can record 4K on a newer potato masher using shadow play. So it's still going to be a pretty lossy capture and it's still not perfect. And it still does affect the computer's performance by a couple frames, not much, but a couple frames, but I can kind of do it, but I can't show you comparable 4k footage for the PS4 pro. I can do 1080p 60 FPS. Another thing I'm concerned about is are people even going to want to see PS4 pro content that bad? Cause I went on a couple very pro PS4 subreddits and forums and almost nobody is excited about this thing. Part of it's because Sony didn't really do a good job marketing it and explaining what it is. But part of it is people don't really feel like they need it. Their old PS4 is going to get HDR and they know they're not going to be playing at native 4K. So are they going to trade in their PS4, probably pay an extra 200 to $250 to get a newer one that plays slightly better? that potentially could play a lot better, but for most people, is just going to be a nice little bump. It's not a generational leap, but Sony's selling it for the price of their the actual console when they did their generational leap a couple years ago. So for people who don't own a PS4, it's kind of a no-brainer if they're looking to get into it and they were willing to spend 400 bucks. But for people who already have one, 
are they actually going to want to upgrade and are they going to want to watch actual comparisons and is it going to even be worth my money or am I going to spend all the Patreon money you guys give me for game codes and all the money I get from YouTube revenue and some of my own money? Am I going to spend all that on a series that nobody cares that much about? I mean, it's a very real concern. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just being realistic, guys. I don't even know if that's something people care about that much. So here's what I'm asking you guys. I know this is a very long rambling video, but I wanted to go into as much detail as I possibly could because I know a lot of you guys are very interested in this subject in budget gaming and stuff like that, and you might want to hear this. I want to know what you guys want to think. I want to hear in the comments, where do you think I should go from here? Because if you just want to see what can you do with a computer that costs about the same as a PS4 Pro, I'll tell you exactly what I would do. <laughs> I would just buy a second graphics card. I buy an RX 480, a GTX 1060, something like that. That is a $200 upgrade, even if I don't sell the GTX 760 that's in the potato masher. And I looked on eBay, on the low end, those are selling for about 80 to 90 bucks right now. On the low end. So if I was going to sell it, which I'm not going to because I still want to keep the original potato masher configuration around till the end of the PS4's life cycle like we talked about. But if I was going to sell it, I'm really only talking about like an 100 to $150 upgrade max. Very, very cheap upgrade. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, we could beat the pants off the PS4 Pro. Everything else in the masher is fine. I'd be upgrading the RAM because I'd be getting more VRAM on whatever new card it is. And we'd be in business. And I guarantee you, I'd be able to match or exceed any decent multi-platform game. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some games that get good scaling on PS4 Pro and poor resolution scaling options on PC and vice versa. That always happens. There are good ports on both platforms. There are bad ports. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about on your average game, I guarantee you for 150 to 200 bucks, I can match or exceed a PS4 Pro doing an upgrade. But is that worth it for you guys? Do you actually want to see that? If you want me to do an entirely new build, I can think about it, but I'm honestly not sure it's worth it because the thing is, I wasn't just going to do another new build or do an upgrade. I have a lot of plans for stuff I'd like to do with this that I'm not ready to say because I don't want anyone to get excited if it doesn't actually happen this year. But part of me is thinking I should just wait until a Scorpio comes out as a complete standalone system that we know is going to be way more powerful than the Xbox One and just build a complete new system and do all the ideas I want to do then. Because I don't want to build this and then build another one next year. That's just too many to keep on top of. So part of me wants to just buy another video card and swap them out for every review. That'll take a lot of extra time, but it'll be a lot cheaper than building an entirely new system. And I'm willing to do that, but there'd have to be that implicit understanding between us that I can't show you what it's actually going to look like at 4K. And very few people are going to be able to. Digital Foundry can... I'm assuming, I'm assuming they have a way to do that. Although to be fair, when they've showed off 4K footage before, it's also been using shadow play, but that might just be because most of their recordings at 1080, so they don't see the need in investing in 4K recording yet. And they might be doing it now. I don't have any insider information, but I would assume that's what they're doing. But even if they're able to record in 4K, I don't nearly have that budget. And guys, I, I just can't do it right now. I mean, maybe another year or two, the technology will get cheaper. Elgato will release like an HD well, not HD, an Ultra HD 60 or something, which I'd imagine somebody's working on that to go along with all the people who are going to want to upload 4K Call of Duty videos. Uh, but the technology isn't really there yet. And I'm not really sure what I want to do. So I want to hear from you guys. I want your opinions in the comments. Whatever I do, I want to make sure that it's educational, that it shows you guys what you can do with a budget PC, that it's encouraging for people who are interested in getting into PC gaming, but are trying to weigh the pros or cons of each individual platform. That's my whole goal with this stuff. It's not about beating down the PS4. And I've talked about this plenty of times, but I want to reiterate it. I don't care what platform you guys game on. There are a lot of good platforms. I mean, there are only like four platforms, but there are good platforms. There aren't any real bad platforms. It just depends on what you prefer, what you want, what platform your friends play on, what type of games you like to play, what type of features you like. I think PC is objectively the best platform, but that doesn't mean it's the right fit for everybody. And I don't want to push it on everybody, but I love educating people on it. And I love encouraging people to try it out because I think it's awesome. And from what I hear from you guys who have seen the potato masher videos and been encouraged to try PC gaming yourselves, you guys tend to agree with me because I get lots and lots of encouraging messages and comments from people going, oh, holy crap, I didn't know you could do this. I built my own potato masher last month. It's amazing. Some people have even beat the specs I did for less money. So this stuff's awesome, and I want to encourage you guys, and I want to make educational stuff and entertaining stuff. 
And I want to keep uh, developers and Sony and Microsoft and all them. I want to keep them honest too, because they'll spend a lot of marketing BS at you, but I'm not selling you anything. So I'll always give it to you straight. And I do genuinely like both platforms. Although, as you guys know, I obviously have a little bit of a preference for PC. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Are you for me getting a graphics card upgrade? Are you against it? Do you really want to see a new system? Do you want me to wait until Scorpio when we get a real generational leap, possibly? What do you guys think? I won't be ready to make any big decisions for a little while, so don't expect to hear anything quite yet. But I am going to read every comment on here. I'm going to think about it. I'll talk to you guys down here in the comments and on future videos. And I'll try to make a decision that's best for the channel, it's best for the project, and it's best for you guys. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.